Niall Sanage, White House columnist for The Hill. Niall, thank you for being here again. Good to be here, Kelsey. But first off, we'll start with former California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger telling Chris Wallace that it's a, quote, no-brainer that he'd win in 2024 if he were eligible to run for president. So broadly speaking, would he have a shot, or is this America souring on celebrity-turned-politicians? So, look, there is clearly an appetite for celebrity candidates generally, and there is also an appetite very clearly for candidates other than the two front runners at the moment, President Biden for the Democrats and former President Trump for the Republicans. We had, Kelsey, you might remember, a News Nation decision desk HQ poll just earlier this month saying that about half the population would consider voting for a third party candidate. That's a different question as to whether that candidate would be Arnold Schwarzenegger if he were eligible, which of course he isn't as someone born in Austria. But look, there is an appetite for something different and that I think was his point in that interview. An appetite for something different. Isn't that the truth? So moving back to the announced candidates, um, the war of words between former President Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis escalating to some rude insults. Is this just par for the course now in American politics or is, is the public, are they looking for something more for professional? So that's really a great question. I mean, I think if you asked the public, they would almost say that they're looking for something more professional, a bit more elevated. But the dynamic here between these two men, former President Trump and Governor DeSantis, is a very macho matchup honestly, and neither of them wants to back down. Both of them, I think, wanting to portray themselves kind of as the alpha male in this race. Now, in your introduction, you read out that tweet from Nikki Haley rolling her eyes about boys will be boys. I, I think that's a, a valid response, certainly, from um, Ambassador Haley. There are real dangers in this kind of approach, but it does get back to that point. Neither wants to back down. They, they both want to stand their ground. So speaking of DeSantis a little more, the governor signing Florida's new budget, but not before making some line item vetoes. What does this budget and his actions surrounding it say about the potential DeSantis presidency? Well, what it says about the DeSantis bid for the presidency is that he wants to nail down conservative support as much as he can. He's the most serious rival to Mr. Trump, but he's lagging him by a good distance in the polls. That means he needs support from the people who vote in Republican primaries. One of the ways to do that is to pursue very firm conservative stances, and that's what he's doing here. Your question, though, was what it would say about a DeSantis presidency. It might say that a DeSantis presidency would be divisive or would be so vigorously conservative as to draw a very powerful backlash. Or the other alternative is that if Governor DeSantis ultimately became the Republican nominee, would he shift at least a notch or two toward the center to try to win a general election and win over independent voters? So President Biden today holding his first re-election rally in Philadelphia. Just how important is Pennsylvania as a whole to the Biden campaign and the Democratic Party? Oh, it's crucial. I mean, it, the fact that Pennsylvania flipped, having been won by uh, President Trump in 2016 to being won by President Biden in 2020, was very important. And uh, as Evan Lambert mentioned in his report, it was a very narrow margin. The, that's one of the three states that comprises the so-called blue wall for Democrats. That was a wall that President Trump dismantled in 2016 and Democrats uh, won back in 2020. So it's very important. It's, uh, I think, significant that President Biden has gone there for his first campaign event and that that event is addressing union members, a key part of the Democratic base, uh, a part of that base that has to be uh, shored up or, or made more enthusiastic than it appears to be right now about a Biden second term. Okay, now Stanage with The Hill. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.